Hey, I'm Jeroen Kraan. This is uh, the Mobile Kite Hostel. I'm uh, doing this together with uh, my girlfriend Eva. Let's have a tour. <laughs> So here we have the kitchen, uh, we have a normal gas stove which uh, runs on uh, LPG uh, and we have a propane heater uh, just for the, for the water, have a normal uh, hot water which runs on uh, Hydro 4, so you just have a uh, normal tap water and um, we have a combi oven, um, so we need a lot of electricity uh, but we have a lot of solar panels on the roof as well. So uh, making it always and um, yeah, we have a lot of storage as you can see, apothecus uh, thing and um, a big fridge. So uh, for all the people, enough storage. We have as well here my, my old kite bar and uh, some special things that people leave behind uh, that they stayed over sometimes. And uh, yeah, we decorated with all the stuff we can find along the road. Um, as you might see here, the, the old kite hooks and uh, the old stuff that we find along the road. It's um, quite recycled and uh, um, just the, like the kitchen, I found it actually on, on a secondhand uh, website for, uh, for free. So I uh, didn't invest luckily that much, uh, except for some other parts that are having some uh, specialties like uh, uh, a normal gas stove doesn't work, uh, an LPG you need to convert it again and stuff like that. So yeah, do take care when you take normal kitchen in a, in a camper van, it's not that easy. <laughs> and this is all from pellets? It's all made from uh, recycled pellets. Um, for the bathroom we have um, uh, a normal shower and a normal toilet, and which is... Um, with 600 liters of water. I don't know if I mentioned that already. And um, we have the water tanks over here. It's normal uh, IBC tanks. And um, that's all in my sleeping room. And if you want to see, you can also see my sleeping room, which I usually never rent out. And um, as you see, it's uh, with the old boating windows and uh, all the hatches can close. And here I have a normal window so just what I could find along my build and what I... Uh, and it's double glazed. This is double glazed indeed. And uh, it's quite isolated. So uh, yeah, we don't uh, lose a lot of warmth in the winter times. It's uh, quite nice and habitable here. And uh, definitely with the fireplace on, it's uh, yeah, a good place to, uh, to stay warm and uh, to still uh, be uh, wanting to go out for a kite session. So uh, here we have the living space, uh, as you see the wood stove. Uh, we made it from uh, two old gas bottles uh, with a little boat window in it. And um, yeah, as you can see, all, again, all pallets. And we also made the cushions out of old kites. And um, yeah, they're quite durable in a way, um, easy to clean as well and um, we have lights in the kite ports and uh, as well uh, we have uh, also some art pieces here and there like every window has a little bit of art in it and um, yeah when you close the hatches you still have the idea you you're seeing something because uh, if you're on a different location you can also blend in as a trucker so it has some secret hideout spots in a way of uh, camping uh, and uh, you can just blend in as another trucker because it looks like a truck and uh, with the, the yeah it's kind of stealth camping in uh, in, in a good way and uh, I uh, was ac actually managing to stand in the middle of Amsterdam for a few days for free so I was uh, kind of uh, happy because this usually never worked out with a normal camper van and uh, yeah, this is a special thing uh, that came with the thing because in the beginning I was thinking, oh my God, where are you gonna park? 
but to be honest they have so much spots for, for truckers that it's uh, a quite good spot but you don't want to walk your dog there because uh, the truckers they uh, sometimes don't have toilets and then uh, you have a bad place for your dog to walk to so uh, yeah take care there but <laughs> It's uh, a good place to, uh, to hide out in and uh, a good place to have some facilities for people. Uh, as you see, we have uh, a, a bed here uh, with uh, some sort of a private room. Um, like this, you still have your privacy and yeah, you have a little bit of your own space. The bed is uh, 2 meters times 1 meter 40 and uh, you have three windows in it. so. You still can uh, do whatever you wish in there and then you have another room in here which is also good isolated and protected from the other room so you would have all the space again and uh, you can easily sleep there with two people and I already had a few guests coming over for one week eventually staying for three weeks um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's a good, good place to stay and uh, usually the people love it. So uh, it's uh, also combined with the terrace, which I think is one of the most beautiful things. Here we have the, the garage, um, one of my foils here and some boards over here. A lot of kite gear, but also the freezer is in here. And uh, to be honest, it's a multifunctional place because uh, I do a lot of repairs on boards or kites or also on the vehicle. Um, so we have all the tools in here, uh, but also we like to sometimes have a little party on the terrace and yeah, use it sometimes as a DJ boot. So uh, in some cases we could have some uh, good parties coming up. You know, as you see the table functions as a, also uh, a wind fenster actually, because I teach sometimes like we have a wind fenster, like it's usually like a little rainbow. And then when I take my little puppet over here, I can sometimes explain how it works a bit. And then you have, um, when you have the wind fencer of 180 degrees, then you can explain them that you have the clockwise, that the kite has to go like, or at 11 o'clock or at one o'clock. And yeah, it's not straight above you if you have gusty wind and stuff like that. And I like the touch. <laughs> yeah, right, so we... Uh, Stayed here? Someone who stayed here, then they uh, just leave little presents and uh, yeah, yeah, just the van life uh, community uh, is uh, always sharing a little bit and they have a lot of time, so that's the most beautiful thing about the van life that you have such a community that uh, is always interacting with each other to yeah, go uh, undertake some stuff like uh, doing some hikes and maybe bringing along the hike some trash bags to clean up some area so like the forest over here in the back we clean it up and uh, we do some activities as well uh, usually every Sunday we take like uh, some stuff to clean the beaches up and to uh, to make it nice so here we have um, the places when the people are too crowded we can sit over here and we can eat over here we have a nice view as you have here you can see if it's windy and um, yeah you have uh, a lot of space for uh, six people um, and let's say in total because we have all the space here it's uh, two and a half meter and uh, you can easily sit here with uh, eight people inside and we had already some parties that got a little bit out of hand with say 20 people inside the truck and that's still livable <laughs> but uh, it's it's really crowded then like 20 people is the maximum uh, because you still have 32 or 34 square meters where you have to live in so uh, yeah but actually quite everything is there like we have a table that we can we can fold up the tables and yeah we have some tables that can fall down again and we have always used this space uh, quite optimal the wall is uh, metal and vermicell so this vermicell is um, heat resistant and um, yeah, the metal is again reflecting the heat. Uh, to be honest, I even have the preparation for floor heating. Um, so I might want to do the floor heating uh, propulsed by the wood stove. Oh, um, so it could work. I mean, I have like a radiator that I put behind it. 
and then I have a little pump that uh, propulses the rest of it through. So the radiator warms up by the wood stove and then you can propulse it through to your, um, to your floor heating. And the most important thing is because of your gray water tank, you don't want it to freeze up. Uh, you want to maybe like wrap it around a few times with this hose that the warm water goes through it and that you actually have the most efficient way to heat your whole truck and to not get uh, stuck with, uh, with your grey water tank. And uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the ways how you can do it. And like for instance, this also is made just from two old gas bottles and this boating window. It was just the resources we had and uh, the things we found along the way. Um, because I was standing a lot of them the kite spot uh, with my truck and I was not completely ready building. Um, I stand at uh, Lelystad and they had some harbors and a harvest day. Sometimes you could uh, go on there and just um, ask the people if you can take a boating window or stuff. And uh, yeah, it was quite uh, a nice place to uh, get some resources from that place. and. Uh, to make uh, all the dreams uh, come through. And uh, like for instance, the curtain over here, we have a curtain that works from uh, an uh, old kite. And uh, yeah, just everything recycled. We have here again, uh, another place to sleep. Uh, we have here um, a bunk bed, which you can uh, fold down for instance like this. And then you have two beds. Um, which are really comfortable, surprisingly comfortable. A lot of people love it to sleep in here because it has a lot of privacy. And yeah, if you are not with two people, you can always fold up the bed like that to have a little bit more space. And also we have actually a fridge in here, which uh, also has a 220 socket over there. And uh, yeah, you have actually all you need in here your little camper van um, so if you want a little bit more privacy and uh, you want to have your own front door this is ideal to uh, have at least some space to pull yourself back to and have a great view from outside and there you can have as well some storage over there the truck itself uh, 510 horsepower uh, Euro 5 engine the year is 2008 and uh, the miles is like 680,000 um, but it just had a new turbo in it so it should last me another 400,000. The length of uh, the truck itself is uh, 7 meters and then the trailer itself is 13. So in total I'm 17.25 uh, which I'm gonna extend maybe in the future. Uh, with a little dinghy coming on the back. So there's gonna come a boat like uh, on the back to it on the hatch. Um, and then if I still have some space, I actually want to put my point from the axle a little bit more backwards. So I could put a bigger water tank here in the front. And the idea is to have a thousand liters of water in the front, um, which I can also use to provide maybe other people in the camper life if I have too much water at the moment or uh, stay in the desert for three weeks with a lot of people. So um, that's the idea about having a lot of water. And then uh, we have here a lot of storage. It's a um, three meter long box times 70 high. So you can store a lot of stuff in it and it goes all the way through. It's not so organized. But it's a lot of kite gear as you see and it goes all the way till the middle and then on the other side there's also so it goes all the way through to be honest. So uh, again optimization from the space as we are trying to do that here as well. Um, made my own box um, but it's still in the construction. Um, so we're gonna put this all together and then at least this is gonna be a little bit more gypsy proof um, because now it runs from inside. I can disconnect it um, and then we have here the, the terrace and uh, the thing where I want to on the hatch I want to pay, take the boat ultimately going in like that and getting out like that so it should be easy to to go on the water 
uh, quick with a little rescue boat. Also capable of lifting two and a half tons. The height is four meters, it's two, uh, 385 to be exact. And in the front, because I have solar panels, it's uh, 390. So uh, came five centimeters higher. I am actually working on a different front door as the stairs as well. Um, so I'm thinking of how to mechanically make it nice to make some sort of a, a ramp uh, thing like uh, which is also immediately a door so um, yeah also if people have some ideas you can maybe uh, put some links in below or something <laughs> but uh, yeah the idea is to uh, make it as, as efficient as possible to every day go 50 or 60 kilometers along the coast of uh, any spot where there's a lot of wind and for instance Egypt has a lot of wind and yeah Morocco also do has a lot of wind and of course Tarifa um, so um, yeah we like to go make some trips and do that uh, every day traveling so for me working with slide outs and stuff uh, first of all I didn't have the budget and second of all I uh, didn't want to put so much time into uh, putting it up and down as a camp. It needs to be movable within uh, a half an hour that we can move to a different locations. The grey water tank we have over here, we have a separate system. We work with, uh, with buckets. Um, to be honest, uh, it was really windy uh, yesterday, so it just fell over a little bit. Uh, but it's usually biological water which we're using um, and for instance this uh, water is used for the shower, this water is used for the, um, for the dishes and this water is used for the toilet. Um, so I can easily say okay for instance if I want to save up water I can say oh right, now I take the, the shower water and I put it into the toilet water so uh, manually I can say okay I flush like that or I just flush at a normal uh, as a normal toilet does but if we'd like to save up water we do it like yeah recycling it a little bit so the shower water becomes the flush water <laughs> so like that you can still say say okay like this or that you do it and easily carryable so uh, no big big uh, big tanks and for me, that's easier to uh, always be uh, wherever I want to be and uh, take the bike or take uh, a car to bring it away to the gas station and to uh, take it away easier than uh, as a big tank. The toilet go goes quite quickly. Like uh, you can flush for, let's say, five times and then uh, it's full. So uh, I always have to monitor it as well when the people are constantly flushing the toilet. <laughs> so uh, it gives a lot of, uh, sometimes when you have a lot of customers over, uh, you have to be there <laughs> and always there to, to change it again. Uh, but we have several buckets so we can like stay for a couple of days in one spot, but usually it's nice to take it away the same day or the next day. So uh, yeah, we are usually close to a facility where we can throw it away and uh, then we just do it every day. And uh, yeah, that's, that's working out quite well. So the gasoline tanks are uh, 950 liters. It's very expensive to fill up. It's very expensive <laughs> to fill up indeed. Um, but then again, you can fill it up on really cheap places. For instance, I... Uh, got it full in Luxembourg and I didn't have to get gasoline in uh, French so this saves you a lot of money and uh, to be honest I even made it with a thousand liters of gasoline from Luxembourg to Tarifa so it's also I think quite efficient uh, in a way of carrying so much weight and so it's around 20 liters per kind of ton? It's something like this, yeah, yeah. Why did you choose this, li uh, this lifestyle and why the truck? I started off um, in, in a small camper van and um, loved the uh, life living on wheels. Mm. And um, I had the idea to um, 
stay in a bigger truck uh, but then I didn't really have the money to really buy like a 4x4 four four, a nice big uh, six truck by six. Uh, or 6x6 six six <laughs> yeah. or 8x8 eight eight. so yeah. uh, in the end I thought yeah uh, what's the cheapest way to, to do it and then I went looking and then I found this uh, this empty box uh, trailer and I could buy it for three and a half thousand euros hmm. and um, I thought yeah well it's a lot of space and then I just need to buy the front and then I was looking for the so front. So first you bought just a trailer so without that, knowing how without, it will end up. Without knowing how it will yeah. end up <laughs> and I didn't even have a, a schedule of, of, of building or, okay. or, or how to make everything and yeah. but did you start to build already before you got the truck yeah i, okay. I mean uh, i already had a house in holland where yeah. i had some building experience so yeah. i knew a little bit how to build uh, some stuff and as well with electricity and with the plumbing and stuff like that I, I knew my way a little bit so i thought yeah i can definitely put on a project like this um, but yet not really um, <clears throat> like blueprints or things that I wanted to have the, the, the interior like this you know I had it in my head but a lot of friends were also when during the build um, uh, some friends had some time over because of COVID they didn't have to work so uh, we had some uh, nice lockdown parties in the way of building <laughs> so um, but they were really getting frustrated after the second day they said I can't do this anymore because they didn't know what to do and they didn't no know plan. yeah they didn't have any plan to be yeah. honest uh, so uh, three days later a friend of mine came back with um, with like a blueprint of how he thought it would be the okay, best idea that's nice and uh, it was really cool of him and yeah. um, in the end uh, I used one of his ideas about a uh, room that making like an L shape you know <laughs> like you still have your privacy um, but not really his idea and yeah like that we had a little bit of an idea of <laughs> what to do and um, yeah we had to start and uh, yeah I got changed during the way actually the the, the first um, week I, I bought the trailer I uh, rented out my house in in Holland and it was December then and it was actually uh, minus uh, five degrees oh, and well. I was thinking oh I will pull it off and uh, quickly uh, finish uh, at least one of the rooms so this first room there um, I built it in like uh, two days full non-stop working and put uh, a gas heater in there to make it a little bit uh, habitable for me to live in the truck already and to mm. save up money because I rented out my house a little bit and like that I was able to at least invest a little bit more in the project. Um, so you parked the trailer next to your house? And I parked the trailer, the I rented out the house but I parked the trailer actually on my uh, stepdad's property. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, he had a quite a big farm where to park it, and um, yeah, it was uh, working out pretty nice because I could also use his tools. It was dating from uh, 1960s, but uh, <laughs> it, it still did the job. So uh, yeah, but you can see that in a lot of things I didn't make such nice cuts and stuff like that. But uh, it's quite rustic. Um, so how long it took to build it all? Um, well, to be honest, I had the idea to uh, put like all the supervision in it, like wood and uh, the kitchen and all the stuff. And then I wanted to drive to Morocco um, and there to do finish the project because I thought, yeah, then I deliver them some work and it's going to be a win-win situation. Uh, but then COVID came and then uh, I had to replan my things a little bit and well the good thing was about it that my friends suddenly had some time left uh, because they were also not able to do anything and so yeah we had some little bit more time to to do it with some friends and um, yeah that worked out for seven months actually and okay. seven months of building um, made it happen to to come to this project almost okay. and after seven months i was still building here and there yeah, if there, you, you if there was there no the wind time. to be honest i left after seven months uh, from the property and i started driving and then uh, i was just building wherever there was no wind or yeah. whatever i was feeling bored then uh, <laughs> we were doing some things and right. yeah just um yeah, actually being sail, sail, autonomous living after seven months already and having a 
big space to mm -hmm. to to drive around in, and uh, was was pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you built it, and then you bought the truck, or during the process? Yeah, during the process. Okay. So um, I I had the the trailer, and then um, after six months, I think it was, I um, I was looking every day already on uh, on secondhand uh, websites. And to be honest, um, when I first started it, I, I found a truck that was really nice, and I thought, oh, that's like the perfect combination, and that only cost like eight thousand euros. Oh, so, nice. so I, I, my budget was like around twenty, mm -hmm. and thinking, oh, I can pull it off. But then, this one got obviously sold within three days, right. and then uh, <laughs> I had to reschedule a little bit my project, and. Um, then if I, eventually I find a, a truck uh, and um, yeah the guys from Prestige Motors uh, and uh, he's not really a, a truck dealer or anything else but he had just this truck standing around for just two days and uh, <laughs> traded it in for a, a nice car and I could buy it for a really good deal because he was a wakeboarder as well and he wanted to learn okay. kite surfing. Okay. Um, so I gave him a good deal for kite surfing lessons, and he gave me a good deal for uh, okay. buying the truck. So I bought cool. it for ten thousand, and then um, yeah, I was um, finally complete. And after like a week, I left the property. Uh, nice. So yeah. So the the all the like the build, the trailer, the truck. Yeah. How much it was approximately until today? Or? Um, complete build, uh, like uh, I would say seven months. Uh, plus another month of uh, spread works mm. during the drive mm. and yeah of course you always have some things coming up when right. the idea is really that um, my girlfriend then would drive with me uh, along with uh, an SUV or something to pick the people up maybe from the mm. airport right. or to do some uh, assistance on some places that I cannot come um, but yeah, most idea is that people go kite surfing along the coast and then I take their gear and then yeah, if we have the wind changing that they need to pick a bigger kite or a smaller kite, we stop and make some breaks and the ultimate goal is that we would have like a little community mm -hmm. driving along the coast uh, with some other camper vans and that we might be with a group of let's say 30 or 40 people and then yeah, we have a little party going along the beach uh, right. in a little uh, parade thingy like uh, that we have uh, yeah just every day some discover some new places and maybe make the place a little bit better because I like always to clean up the place as well and to um, yeah if we see plastic on the beach or glass laying around we clean it up and stuff like that right. so and this was the idea right at the beginning it was not this, like you this want was to the build idea. first a house for you i mean the the idea in the beginning was uh to make the ultimate downwinders mm. um, because 14 years ago i started kite surfing i was struggling a lot to go upwind yeah um so uh yeah i was already like from 14 years ago thinking ah oh, would be nice if somebody picks it or up organize something that you can just go along the wind and I think it was uh, 10 years ago people started to do it and I started to do it as well and in Holland we did it a lot uh, with cars and a lot of hassle to pick up the car wire there and just make it uh, make a nice trip out of it um, so yeah really cool concept and later on people started to do it in Brazil and mm. other places and now it's starting to get more popular and yeah we're trying to discover just new places and make it also really efficient to to put down this thing because um i was doing it in sailboats and uh, trying it in, in in sailboats so i get my licenses for to sail and to uh, rent a, a sailboat so we did that in uh, in greece but um it's always difficult to, to sleep on a place where you can kite surf um, because it's windy yeah. and then you have the waves and yeah it's usually not in a good place mm. where you exactly where you want to go out and so um, this is just much more uh, right. relaxed because you can just park in front of the beach where there are big waves mm. and where there's high winds you don't really need to care that much about um, 
the weather conditions yeah. and if the weather conditions are changing you are also much quicker on a different location mm -hmm. so in this way it's much more efficient and yeah working out much better the solar panels how much um, power do you have i have uh, eight uh, solar panels for 320 watts yeah and then I have um, eight batteries of uh, 240 amps. 24 volt. Uh, yes, so um, also an inverter with 220, um, which has a peak of like 5000 uh, watts, watts okay. because um, I have a combi oven. Hmm. And um, yeah, it runs on 3000 watts already. So yeah, when a lot of people have their laptops on and uh, the microwave is running and stuff then it can be having some problems um, so yeah usually uh, it, it works uh, perfect yeah, always like and, uh, fridge freezer can run fridge freezer no everything runs on it and uh, yeah it's just like a normal house actually yeah. can you so, charge it while driving from alternator or? Uh, yes i can but um, usually um, it works on the 12 volt system so to be honest it works like uh, the starter batteries they charge again the 12 volt system from the hatch and then later it comes back hmm. to the uh, 220 system so um, I'm having actually three different systems okay um, so start system that yeah. has two batteries and then I have the, the four uh, batteries for the 220 and then the other two batteries for the 12-fold uh, lighting and as well for the hatch. Okay, why so, did you split them, 12 and um, 220? Because then you have much more uh, reliance on uh, the electricity because if you run out of one... Of uh, heavy duty then you still can unlight uh, the so charge still, box. You still have your 12-fold lighting, yeah. your 12-fold system, this would almost never run out. Okay. Um, so, yeah. In this case, it's uh, so you have solar sun, solar panels and yeah. solar charge controller that charge 12 volt system. Yeah. And then 12 volt system charge this to 20 batteries. So they charge uh, all together, they and charge. then you just split them. No, no. I have uh, two solar panels. They connect oh, okay, to, separately to the separate system. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so basically, the, two the, solar the panels charge 12 volts. Exactly. And the, the rest, rest six of the six to 20. To 20. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it works. It works. And yes. have been like 220 is down, and you still have light, or it always have been like you're good. You're, um, you're set. I have in Holland. I had some difficulties, um, and that's why I put the extra mm. two. Okay. on it and after okay. that it was it was gone yeah. um, so in Holland when you have really long cloudy days it can be difficult yeah. but um, yeah okay what was the inspiration uh, the inspiration was uh, mainly because um, I lived in the van and then I was uh, traveling around and seeing other people in big trucks driving around and then I met a French group of uh, big truckers uh, with big trucks and uh, they uh, were actually parked here on Los Lances. So they had already built? They, they, they had uh, um, big trucks and uh, they inspired me in a, in a big way because um, I, they were actually able to come on some places where I was not even able to come with my smaller camper van. Okay, so they had like 4x4 four four or 6 places? No, so, some of them had, mm. but because there was in this big of a group, they were working so good together, mm. um, they didn't really need it. But um, they didn't have so long trailers, they had just a truck truck. They had few trucks. Um, so but without the trailer like you have. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, they had uh, these horse trucks mm. and... Uh, right. Also, uh, two of these Iveco's mm. uh, 4x4s. Um, there was just like these Unimog things. And um, they, they really inspired me in a way of seeing how easy they were coming onto the beaches because mm. we traveled from Tarifa to Portugal with them and they did uh, every day 50 kilometers. So we would see like every beach here along Andalusia to uh, the um, to the, the coast of uh, Sagres. Um, so it was really inspiring how to see that they uh, drove through dry riverbeds and uh, a few of the guys, they didn't have any 4x4s mm -hmm. and they were 
kind of low to the ground so I was thinking well if they can come there I can come there but I was actually mistaken in some places uh, my camper was lower than their truck so in some cases my uh, truck hit it some stones and stuff yeah. and I was thinking yeah it's it's really uh, doesn't really matter how big you are as you are just planning your route right uh, you're capable of, of going on really special places and the community they had was really amazing like uh, having outside cinemas on the truck and <laughs> like uh, really a crazy way of uh, of traveling and uh, they came from Morocco uh, they traveled for uh, six months through Morocco and then um, they came back uh, to Tarifa along the coast of Portugal and yeah we followed them for um, let's say five six hundred kilometers mm, wow. and so we stayed with them for a couple of weeks and um, yeah super inspiring to see them in these big trucks and I told them as well like uh, yeah the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, buy a big truck as well and um, yeah that's that's how I came up the idea and then I was just looking around for what is the most uh, cheapest way to get as big as you can get and um, yeah then I came up with this idea so uh, it was immediately like okay I will buy big to make hostel it's not like for myself no, first no it was it was also just because I saw them parking on the beaches on this beautiful spots and thinking well uh, if they can come there uh, why can I not offer that to other people right. Um, so that's how I came up with the idea to share it a little bit with uh, people that are maybe not van life experienced or van life experienced and they don't want to drive their van all the way up to uh, some uh, more warmer resort. So uh, we intending to go to a lot of places like uh, Morocco and uh, maybe even Egypt and drive all along the Mediterranean through the Balkan lands and yeah we even have the idea maybe to go to India with the truck um, okay. but yeah that's uh, gonna be a mission through Himalayas and stuff but yeah let's see how the the world is uh, recovering from uh, from everything and yep. uh, hopefully we are free to travel soon enough again to hopefully uh, do you have any advice for someone who is looking to do something similar or just build a truck like because um, sometimes I think truck is like you think like van is easy but truck is something like wow. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah no it is um, to be honest just just go for it and um, you will ex as well see that a big truck is actually not not uh, doesn't have to be a, a disadvantage um, like I said maybe earlier already in the video uh, you you're quite easy to go stealth camping uh, if you put it on the right way um, but then again if you're in a region where you're having difficulties with um, with parking and um, for instance in Holland you do have some places where it's not that easy uh, to to camp or to park and yeah then you really need to think about okay maybe I need to quickly go to another place where you can make this dream happen and um, yeah just to find out in whatever state you're coming from to see uh, what are your rules and uh, to check out um, what what's the best thing to do for you and um, yeah with uh, also a thing is um, what I uh, was kind of uh, not knowing about is the insurance um, because in Holland it's quite difficult to insure a truck so uh, you have to be aware of that when you buy a truck like this um, that you already have a plan how to insure your truck um, so you had to register it as a motorhome to insure it? Or? Yeah, I had to, well, to be honest, not re register it as a motorhome, I registered it as a company. Mm -hmm. And because I, uh, I have a company as a, as a mobile kite hostel, I'm, uh, I, I told the insurance actually I'm transporting kites. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously I cannot transport people in the truck when I'm driving um, so um, yeah this uh, is what the insurance is always worrying about so as soon as I told them the word hostel behind it uh, all the alarm bells went off there okay. and I had a lot of difficulties uh, getting it insured um, but 
after I told them, yeah, I'm not gonna transport people. It's just really just transporting kites and equipment. Uh, then they as well realized that it's just a, a good project to uh, also insure. And uh, to be honest, I'm paying a lot of insurance because it's a really crazy project. Um, but uh, compared to, for instance, another trucker, uh, they're driving a lot on the streets, they're doing a lot of maneuvers, and I'm driving maybe 3,000 Ks um, in, in, let's say, three or four months. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's not completely fair, but in a way... Yeah. <laughs> You're like, do, but they do in 10 days. Uh, exactly, in, in yeah, days, exactly, yeah, weeks. exactly. What I do in a year, they do in 10 days, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's, it's completely fair, but... Um, so you, you pay for driving less insurance and then for standing as well? Yeah, for okay. for the well for the people insurance. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the kite insurance. Mm. So uh, basically, it's like hostel would be insured, like yeah, everything is like a separate insurance yeah, thing. Yeah, so everything is insured. Yeah, yeah, everything's That's insured yeah. and yeah, it's kind of important. But then still, again, if people fall off the hedge, it's kind of there own responsibility mm -hmm. in a way um, so yeah you're not uh, <laughs> you're not gonna get some money if you fall off the hatch here <laughs> but um, yeah well then they should have already insurance uh, exactly insurance, exactly so. exactly but um, yeah no stuff like that um, it's, it's just difficult if you really want to get into the van life um, for a, a normal truck um, then you just need to uh, yeah, think about yeah. what is going to be your, your concept and in some cases if you have for instance an old timer you can insure it uh, as, a, as a camper van and there are a lot of rules to, to maintain in, uh, in the camper van scene also with this mm. trailer you can easily convert it to caravan but then if you convert it to caravan, I, I did the conversion to caravan um, because it's important when you go from ferry to ferry mm -hmm. um, because then you don't have to pay the taxes from inside because else you will be seeing like you're transporting goods yeah. same um, highways right like uh, road, national so, roads and yeah somewhere. same as highway indeed um, but then again I pay almost the same as a, as a normal truck for the mm -hmm. paid road so yeah in a way they just do it on size and weight i think but so that would be the con of having a big vehicle. yeah 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 the the insurance could be a, a big issue like uh for what i'm paying now a month is around 600 700 euros a month <laughs> That's so hard. it's quite a lot uh for all this insurance so but yeah then again it's uh, for the company it's quite important like we didn't talk about the gas storage where you have a the gas storage is uh, in the, tra the, um, the box underneath yeah uh, how so many liters yeah um, I use just normal uh, gas tanks because um, like 15 20 liters something like that. yeah something like this I think it is uh, like uh, the normal usual size uh, <laughs> those ones that you swap yeah, I, yeah, I usually okay. swap them uh, because I, yeah, of course I'm a big vehicle, so I didn't want to get stuck on some places where I didn't have access to the gas mm. uh, because, yeah, a lot of trucks don't have gas <laughs> where they run on, so that's yeah. why I thought I need to have something mobile that you can easily, uh, just like the buckets, just throw away and mm. uh, get... Uh, and, and the heating? Uh, the heating uh, we have that usually from the from the wood stove, right. and then we also have some gas heaters. Uh, gas heater. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, on propane. Um, but to be honest, to use the propane in this uh, big area, you pay around uh, forty euros in uh, let's say three days or four days. So in uh, winter, like cold. In winter, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the gas goes really quick. Um, so to be honest, I prefer the wood stove, and, and is it it's enough more than life enough. With all these rooms, it it's goes more there? more than enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, if I put it on in, in even minus fifteen, I've stand it, mm -hmm. uh, and then inside it could be thirty degrees, and also in the other rooms it could be thirty degrees. Oh wow! And um, yeah. yeah, also when it goes off, you. Have, like because it's quite isolated a mm -hmm. uh, couple of hours the uh, next morning you 
put some wood on and then you're good you know so um, yeah it's uh, it's quite okay if you're really standing in a really really cold area we're using this uh, brown coal mm -hmm. and that stays uh, really long hot yeah. and then yeah it's easy to stand in minus 15 or minus 20 degrees so. okay uh, yeah. how has it been living now like it was it exactly as you imagine it you will build a truck here. not yeah. talking about that you cannot be now in Morocco yeah, exactly, exactly. But, but exactly the tiny living experience yeah. the, the, and the, the hostel experience the tiny itself. living experience definitely I mean it's not that tiny <laughs> um, but uh, yeah 30, 34 of, how much? Yeah. Uh, square 34 meters. square meters yeah. still still there kind of it's still kind of square, uh, small yeah indeed <laughs> but <laughs> it's uh, definitely that I think sometimes I have uh, more than enough space and mm. um, yeah, I, I love it. Uh, I have my hot showers every day, and um, yeah, it's just a uh, way other experience, super luxurious experience. It's not what I had because I was used to live in a van with didn't have a shower, and then <laughs> living in that one for three years uh, okay. is a total different experience than this. Yeah. Okay, and the hostel itself experience? And the hostel is super amazing. I love it to be uh, the host and yeah. uh, to um, entertain the people here and to um, do excursions with them and to uh, teach them kite surfing or to yeah. do a lot of things. We uh, not only do kite surfing, we do uh, hike tours, we do uh, okay. with um, mountain climbing and uh, we do mountain biking. Um, paragliding and uh, actually all kinds of activities that are in the area that uh, are kind of nice we try to do it and um, like last full moon we tried to do a full moon kite session um, so it was like yesterday two days ago exactly yeah 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 so always when we have some ideas coming up or did this work um, yeah, kind of, but it was really cold, to be okay. honest. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we we like would like rather be in more south areas, so... Um, <laughs> but yeah. like, the, you could see well. Yeah, you could see really well, okay. and um, yeah, in summer times it works out much better, because yeah. then much more people show up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's something uh, a little bit better for the summer, but now it worked out okay-ish. And... Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we all do kinds of activities like uh, cleaning up the beaches and um, we have this uh, these clippers uh, that we give sometimes to the people to uh, clean up the beaches. Mm. Um, so different, different things and um, yeah, also sometimes kind of parties we organize uh, with, um, with some DJs and uh, stuff that we uh, drive to a nice valley or somewhere and uh, we put it there and uh, we make some uh, some cool uh, cool parties. Um, nice. So yeah, from from all markets at home, I would say. Yeah. And uh, how people can find you? How Instagram? I have page? Instagram uh, that is uh, called Mobile Kite Hostel, and um, yeah, of course, uh, a, a website and a Facebook page. Um, all of the mobile. Uh, all, right. all of them Mobile Kite Hostel, and uh, they can. Uh, uh, the, the fastest way send me a message through WhatsApp or uh, just uh, on uh, Instagram or something and um, yeah that's how they uh, easily could find me and usually we always leave a, a mark where we are and thinking to use like polar steps or some <laughs> other platforms to uh, to work on that uh, we usually have a Wi-Fi hotspot but uh, at the moment we have some difficulties with it but uh, it's getting back online like last summer we had a really good summer and everything was working perfect but last couple of days uh, there's something going on with the Wi-Fi yep. uh, with the MIVI or how we call it <laughs> um, but um, yeah then usually you could see where we are and we keep uh, up to date okay. where, we, and, uh, where we stay. What is the plan now the, in the near future? Like um, to stay in the well, yeah, difficult to plan. <laughs> um, right. But uh, yeah, the, the, the plan is to go to Fuerteventura, hmm. uh, to, from Fuerteventura to Morocco, and then from Dakla uh, to go down to Tangier again, and then from Tangier back to Tarifa. Okay. Um, and how it usually works, like people reach out and say I want to come like in two months. 
But you have no idea where we are and yeah. like where they should fly. Like that's 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 always the difficulties now, yeah. definitely because we are also difficult with with planning things uh, because of COVID. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as the time evolves, we we will see. Like uh, usually, it's handy to plan just not too far ahead <laughs> quite spontaneous yeah. that's the easiest <laughs> right. um, but uh, then again yeah there's always things to plan for like in two months uh, could say I'll be in Fort Aventura but then again it's, it could not uh, go on with the ferry so um, for me to say where I could be in two months it's really difficult at the moment right. but yeah then again um, the plan is there so um, yeah of course uh, when we have a little bit of the plan we try to come up with some alternative as well for instance uh, we actually have some bookings for Fort Aventura coming up mm -hmm. And I already know a few other people that have a little bit uh, of a similar housing. They have some houses there. Um, so worst case scenario, if I cannot show up there, they can still go to that facility. Okay. Cool. So nice. in a way, we still uh, provide back them up with a backup. And um, yeah. So that's that's the worst case scenario. But okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your story. Yeah. Thanks. Showing uh, this huge. Yeah. Tiny house. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very thanks inspiring. for. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, thanks for showing up and uh, doing this interview. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really cool. And, and uh, uh, all the links will be in the description below. So if you want to come and see by yourself this amazing track, uh, then uh, make sure to reach out. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Yes.